Let's talk about weathering. Weathering is the process in which rocks are changed and broken down. This process occurs in two different ways. Let's look at the first way. So the first type of weathering is called mechanical weathering or physical weathering. And that occurs when rocks are broken down into pieces. Think about cutting up a piece of paper with a pair of scissors, right? All the little pieces that you make, you can tape them back together and you can make the original, you know, uh, piece of paper, right? Just keep that thinking while we talk about this. So all forms of mechanical and physical weathering take place because of special agents. And those agents are responsible for making those changes. So let's take a look at those agents. First one is called ice or um, ice wedging. That's the agent that causes um, rocks to break apart over time because of cycles of freezing and thawing. For example, water will seep into a crack. So just from ordinary rainwater, um, it fills up fills these small cracks and during the colder nights or the winter time that freezes and the freezing process causes an expansion and that makes the crack a little bit wider and this continues to happen over and over again until you have a large crack in the rock when you look at our streets and sidewalks it's a noticeable feature to see potholes and cracks like this because we live in a climate that lends itself to this type of activity where there's a lot of freezing and thawing over the course of seasons like our winter and our really cold fall and early spring months. The next three agents, water, wind, and gravity all perform the same type of weathering. It's a type of weathering called abrasion. And this is where rocks are picked up and rubbed against other rocks. So as water or wind or gravity pick up smaller little pieces of rocks, they actually scrape them against other surfaces. That causes more and more weathering to occur. And our third agent of erosion are plants. And plants grow in all different types of conditions. Probably outside your own home, you've noticed plants growing through cracks in your sidewalk, your driveway, rocks that are in your backyard. Well, when this happens, the roots that make up the plant uh, over time can actually expand and make cracks larger, similar to ice wedging. And this can split rocks. So in the really extreme situations, trees can really do a lot of physical damage to rocks over time because their roots just get stronger and stronger and um, break apart rocks very slowly. All right, let's move on over to the other type of weathering. It's called chemical weathering. You can see in the background that this, this rock formation has a lot of holes in it. All right, it didn't form that way. That something happened to it to make those holes. So a chemical weathering event involves chemical reactions that chemically change the rock. So before I gave the example of taking a piece of paper and cutting it into sm small pieces and then gluing them or taping them back together, this is totally different. This would be like burning paper. Once you burn it, there's no going back. So chemical weathering creates something new. So here's a couple of examples. This is oxidation. And oxidation is rust. Now rust looks different in different types of rocks because of the minerals that make them up. But no matter what, rusting uh, will weaken the rock because you're making something new and that leads to faster weathering. One of the most classic examples, this is not a rock, but the Statue of Liberty went through an oxidation process. I mean, this is the way she looks now, but when we got her from France, she was actually like this. She's made of copper, and when copper rusts, it turns the green that you see today. If we were to go back in time, it looks like a penny. That's the way she really looked when we got her, but that's the oxidation process. Um, some other types of weathering that uh, involve chemicals, acid precipitation. 
that's responsible for most chemical weathering these days because of uh, pollution. And we say acid precipitation because it's not necessarily rain. It can also be snow. So any water that falls from the sky. So very visible in statues and monuments that we build out of built out of certain types of rocks because they're very uh, susceptible to this uh, type of chemical weathering. And acid precipitation it occurs when acids that are in the air, and there are some natural uh, ways that acids get in the air, forest fires, uh, volcanic eruptions, that puts uh, certain, certain amounts of sulfur and other chemicals in the air that can mix with rainwater or, or snow. But uh, burning fossil fuels is a surefire way, way to put acids into the atmosphere. And that will make acid rain. And when it comes down, you and I as human beings would never know it. But as it falls on surfaces like this, it can eat away at them and, and uh, break them down over time. And it, it's visible in a lot of parts of um, the United States, especially where we've built things out of limestone or marble. If some of that water seeps into the ground through infiltration, um, it may contain weak acids or pick up some acids from being in the ground and will dissolve certain types of rocks. So now that water is leaking into the groundwater system. It's underground and uh, it can create things like this. This is a cave system that's uh, filled with formations that are from the process of water with a slightly acidic composition chemically breaking down rock over time. There are some important formations in this cave that you should be aware of. For instance, the features that are growing out of the ground, and, and that's really what they are. They're leftover rock, but um, as the rock wore down around them, these are what, what are left behind. These are called stalagmites. The G is for forming for, from the ground. And then on the ceiling, we have stalactites. And stalactites are formations that rock is literally dripping pieces of the rock as the water seeps into it it's dripping like an icicle and um, causing the rock actually to wear away it, uh, you know because of gravity so it's a, it's a feature notable in cave systems because of the types of rocks that make them up and our last type of chemical weathering example are lichens and really lichens are a fungi all right, like um, similar to mushrooms and things like that. But any living thing can actually do this. It's just that lichens are specifically designed to do this. They chemically break down rocks over time. They actually will eat away at the rock and break it into smaller and smaller particles. Um, so plants can also do something like this. Some animals, their waste products can also do something like this. Their bodies when they die can do something like this. No matter what, it's a chemical breakdown of the rock because of its exposure to the elements in living things. So no matter what type of weathering we're talking about, all weathering processes break rocks into smaller rocks. They take rocks and make them into sediments. And sediments really include this list. Boulders, cobbles, pebbles, sand, silt, and clay. That's from biggest to smallest. So let's review. Weathering is a process that changes the characteristics of rocks on Earth's surface. And weathering comes in two forms. Physical weathering or mechanical weathering is when rocks are broken into smaller pieces without changing their chemical composition. And chemical weathering is when rocks are chemically changed into a different substance. So that's it for now, and thanks for watching.